Hey guys, Quinn from Canada. I hope you're having a great day. Part three of constraints. But before we head to the computer, there is a poll on a community tab for what the next tutorial should be. So make sure you check that out. Anyways, grab a beverage boys. Let's get at it. Okay guys, so let's start out with a blank sketch here. If you've forgotten how to do this, watch the beginning of episode one. Let's start with a line and ju just draw a line anywhere. So the first constraint I want to show you is right here. It's the block constraint. Click the block constraint, click the object, and look, fully constrained, where you can't move this in any way, shape, or form. It is locked in. Now, unlike the lock constraint, which gave us the horizontal and a vertical constraint, you notice it's its own entity. So this is just locked in. Sometimes you just need to say, yep, this is good enough for the girl's ID. All right, so let's delete this constraint so I can show you the next constraint on the list. This guy here, the create a symmetric constraint is probably one of the most confusing constraints in FreeCAD. It is also the most useful because it has several different operations that you could use it for. Let's start out with the most common use, and that is to make two points concentric to plane. So select it, click on one point, click on another point, and click on a plane. What you'll notice is that it lined these two up, these two points. It also made it symmetric. So this guy here is the same length as this guy here. So as you make the line longer or shorter, you'll notice the other side mirrors. Also, when you go up and down, you'll notice that the other end follows. It's almost as if this was one line going from here to here and this center point, so the point you clicked on third, acts like a mirror. Now, you don't have to use a plane. You can actually use a point as well. And I'll show you that too. Let's delete this. Once again, select your create symmetric, select the first point, select your other point, and then select a point you wanna go around. We're gonna use the origin of the sketch now, notice what happens if we try to move this around. Once again, the length duplicates, but what we're mirroring this time is now the rotation. Now, that may not sound really exciting, but I'll show you a very good practical use of this. Let's delete this line and let's draw a rectangle. You'll notice that uh, all these constraints are automatically created in order to lock this image. That's a pretty cool feature of FreeCAD if you ask me. So now what I want to do is take my create symmetric, or sometimes called a create equal. I'll select this point right here. Then I'll select this point right here. And now I'll select the origin. You may have missed that, but look, if I make one side or another side longer, it will always stay centered to the origin of my sketch. That is a really awesome feature. Now the third thing that we can do with this command is locate the center of any line. So let's draw another line. So now let's say I want this point to be at the center of this line. The way I would do that is I would click the create symmetric constraint. I would click the one end of the line. Then I would click the other end of the line and then I would click this guy right here and you'll notice this guy is now snapped right there in the middle so if I take this line and move it it'll always be there now this might be a little bit easier to see if I delete the symmetric constraint right there now watch as I move this guy around see this guy is snapped right to it so now I want to show you something that you have to be really careful of whenever you're working with constraints now let's apply a vertical constraint to this line right here. And we'll apply a horizontal constraint to this line right here. Now let's look on the side here. We have 11 constraints. Let's say I add a fillet right here, which is this command right here. Click here, click here. Notice how our horizontal constraint, our vertical constraint disappeared. But not only that, our symmetric constraint also disappeared. See, we're down to nine constraints, so three are missing. The reason is because all three constraints use this point that used to exist here. 
when we created this fillet, this point disappeared. So all the constraints that came with it disappeared as well. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on this. So warning aside, let's just continue on. The next thing I want to talk about is circles. So in order to do that, let's just delete this whole thing. Whenever you have a circle, it only has three degrees of freedom. And those degrees of freedom are horizontal, vertical, and its radius. So let's just give it a diameter since we haven't used this constraint and we'll make this, let's make it 10. And now you'll notice we're at two degrees of freedom and let's just be cheap here. And if we lock the horizontal and a vertical, there you go, fully constrained. So let's just delete this so I can show you the next thing. And sometimes you'll see this too. You won't be able to click on a measurement for whatever reason. And it's just a UI bug. You can always use this. So let's create another circle. And on this one, I'll actually apply a radius. And the radius of this one is five millimeters and this is 10 millimeters. So you'll see they're identical. So let's exaggerate it. Let's make this 10 millimeters. Now you can see that these are basically two different sizes. If I apply our symmetric constraint, we can only apply the symmetric constraint to the center point. The center point of a circle here acts just like a point in a line. So I can click here, I can click here, and you know what, just because it looks cool, let's use the origin here. And now, just like the line, if I grab one of these guys and I pull them farther and closer apart, they'll match, but also I can make this go all the way around. like. So let me show you another use for an old constraint here that we've already covered. Let's delete this diameter right here. If I click on equal constraint, click on this circle, and then click on this circle, it will make these two radiuses or diameters the same. Okay guys, so we're down to our last constraint here. So let's delete the symmetry constraint. We'll move this guy here. Let's move this guy right here. So the last one is this guy right here, create tangent. Just like the picture shows, it makes a line that's in tangent to the circle. If I click on this guy here, the circle, let's click down here and look at that. This guy is now trapped. Part of the circle has to touch that line and we can apply it to more than one line. So if I click here again, click this guy, click this guy. Now look at that. See this guy's green. This guy is fully constrained. He can move not at all, but you can also attach a circle to a circle as silly as it sounds. So let's grab this guy here. Let's grab this guy. Let's grab this guy and look at that. So now the outer diameter of that circle lays on it. The other circle. Now there's a couple funky things like see this here? Yeah, that's not an editing glitch. That that's just something that happens sometimes. And you know, if it if you can't get to a certain area, try it the other way. Or you can just delete the constraint, move it close to where you want it, and then apply the constraint. That's the other uh, way around it. Lastly, you can of, of course apply lines to here. So let's draw a line, clicky clicky, make it really long. And you know what? Let's apply this line here to this guy here. And you can, of course, do it to multiple circles. So clicky this guy, clicky here, clicky here. So now this passes through two circles. And of course, as you move one circle, it will update the view. So just like before, this line does exist on an infinite plane now. So you could take them and drive them off. So be wary of that. All right, boys, that's it for the constraints tutorial. I hope you guys had fun on that series. Don't forget to vote on the community tab, like, and as always, Scotch scribe. Nazdrovia.